Hey guys, it's Morgan from Highland Cycles coming to you with our final build video on the 2023 300XC. We are done getting this thing 100% ready to race. Uh, there are a few parts that I'm waiting on uh, that I want to do some testing on, but as far as building this as a race motorcycle, it is done, ready to rock, as good as I can make it. Uh, so I wanna go over all the things, all the people who sponsored this bike, all the parts that we've got on it, what fits, what doesn't fit from previous years, all that good stuff. Um, I hope you guys find this interesting. If you're new to the channel, you've been watching these 300 videos, or maybe this is the first 300 video you've watched, consider giving us a subscribe. Uh, it really does help the channel a lot. Also, it will continue to inspire me to do tons of content on this motorcycle as we beat on it and uh, try to find any flaws, try to show, showcase all the awesome stuff all that good stuff. We are gonna be absolutely relentless on this motorcycle. I paid full boat for the motorcycles. If it fails, you guys are gonna be the first to know. All right, now let's start with the biggest sponsor of this bike, Bulletproof Designs. The boys at Bulletproof Designs have been very generous over the years. They've been very, very good to me. I need to tell you that I bought their parts long before they ever gave me any parts. Full transparency, every part on this bike that's Bulletproof, they gave me, I didn't pay a penny for. So uh, let's start with the most venerable part of this thing, the radiator guards. Probably the thing that Bulletproof Designs is most known for is their radiator guards. And yes, these radiator guards fit from the 22s and back. Now they're not the 16 and back, you know, the 16 and back ones won't fit, but everything forward of that fit this bike. Even with this crazy shroud design, that thing fits. It's no problem. It's a little bit harder to install because this is in the way. Uh, you gotta take the tank out of the way now, but um, really no big deal. Awesome, awesome parts, whatever. They're amazing. Let's talk about disc guards. We are running the Bulletproof Designs front disc guard on this set of wheels. Also fork lug protector. Very, very burly. Um, to be honest, I'm a little concerned about the fact that it's aluminum up there. I have caught those on rocks before and gone over the bars. I'll show you my other uh, disc guard that I'll be testing too. As far as protection, hands down the most bulletproof, pun intended. Also, we've got their right fork lug protector. Yes, it does have a hole up in here. Uh, it does make it so you can't grab that adjuster by your hand, which is what KTM set it up as, but with a Torx bit, you can still adjust this uh, while you're out on the trail getting your clicker settings. Bulletproof Designs wheel set. Um, they were kind enough to give me a full wheel set. Uh, front and rear, 2118. And they are very, very good. As far as the weight compared to stock, they're very, very close. I didn't put them on a gram scale, but they're very close. I have already tightened the spokes up once. I have heard, and I think really any set of wheels, I don't care if they're W's or whatever, you're gonna have to tighten spokes over time. So uh, I've already tightened these things up once and they seem to be holding tension pretty good. Let's move to the back. We've got the Bulletproof Designs rear disc guard and caliper guard. It's nice. Uh, they have made this now work with System Tech Racing's uh, caliper cooler. So that is awesome. It used to not be that way. You used to not be able to have the caliper cooler and this guard on there. Now we can, this is all nice and protected. Obviously burly billet aluminum uh, rear shark fin. They're super, super strong. Again, Bulletproof Designs rear wheel. So I just have SRT uh, front and rear rotors on this set of wheels. And then the last thing from Bulletproof Designs that's actually on the motorcycle is this link guard. Um, this is a new link guard for this shock because the shock is brand new. It does not, need you do not need to take the bolt out of the shock to put this on it just clamshells around it with one bolt lock tight that sucker super super protective guys i am running the stock skid plate for now uh, enduro engineering is actually sending me an aluminum one but as far as i'm concerned this thing is ready to race with this skid plate it is actually super durable some people have talked about breaking them it's been crazy strong for me, so zero issues on that. Couple things that Bulletproof Designs has sent me, but I have not installed yet. Uh, they sent me a set of their foot pegs. They do fit, they have foot pegs that fit um, with the replaceable cleats and everything. Uh, and then also a set of uh, axle blocks, the adjuster blocks. Um, I have not installed those because I'm going to, I wanna test these stock pegs a little bit longer and I didn't need to replace the axle blocks yet. So 
Uh, we will be doing that later. So make sure, again, stay tuned. There's more stuff coming, lots more testing of different parts on this. But um, I just want to let you know they were kind enough to give me all that stuff. I just haven't put it on. I don't plan on putting it on for quite a while. The other thing that is on the way from uh, Bulletproof Designs is a flange protector. The 22 and back flange protectors do fit on this flange. They changed the part on uh, from KTM, but the new, the old protectors do fit on this flange. That's not on there, it's on the way. <sighs> I don't necessarily consider that a ready to race thing. I guess if you're doing a lot of hard enduro, maybe, but I'm not gonna be racing this thing hard enduro yet. I do plan on that. Um, and we'll do another build video on that, uh, getting this thing set up for actual hard enduro. But right now it's set up for more cross country, hair scramble with some hard stuff, but not a ton of hard stuff. All right, guys, another long, long-term sponsor of the channel is Nitro Moose. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. Douglas at Nitro Moose for always providing me with mooses. I'm running the NM21220 on the front uh, with this X31 front and then NM18305 with the X30 rear, 110-100 uh, rear. I don't need to say anything about Nitro Moose other than flat proof. That's all, that's all that matters. Like, and again, if you're racing, in my opinion, you gotta have mooses of some kind. Obviously there are other mooses out there. I love Nitro Moose. They've taken good care of me. I'm sticking with them. Their products have definitely gone up and down as far as sizing and things like that. But uh, honestly, for a long time now, I've been really happy and they last a long time and they're great and I don't get flats. TBT Racing. We are a TBT racing shop. We do full revalves here in shop. We don't send them out. We do them here. All the, everything from stacking shims to changing internal parts to bladder kits, all that good stuff. So this is a brand new chassis, but Travis has had a four stroke chassis with these forks and this shock for quite a while. That's where we got our settings. Also, he took my input from racing this motorcycle with stock suspension and gave him the clicker settings I ended up with. He took that information along with the information he already had and got a setting for this. So I will be testing. I do think it's gonna be very good. We might have to make some changes down the road to make it better. Um, and really dial it in. Everything I've ever done from TBT, Travis is incredibly good at taking rider input and then building a stack based on that. So TBT Racing, huge sponsor. Again, these are full revalve. They are still air forks. They are the brand new air fork with the hydrostop set up in the um, bottom. And then we've got the brand new shock with uh, a bladder kit from WP. That is the official WP, you know, OEM bladder kit on that thing. Quick note, this adjuster that says you can do it by hand, that is not true, unless you have tiny, tiny fingers. But so anyway, <laughs> nice job KTM, but the rebound, not really adjustable by hand. Next thing on this bike I wanna talk about is RK Tech. The motor on this motorcycle is incredible. Honestly, you don't really need to do anything to it to go racing. It's incredible just as it sits, but, as a guy who likes horsepower, I know a lot of you guys like horsepower, and a guy who lives at 6,000 feet, I wanted more back. Uh, we lose about 20, almost 30% up here. Well, by the time you get up high, it's at least 30%. I wanted the low end that this thing makes at sea level up here. So Kelsey built me a couple of different domes. We've got one in there. We do have another dome to test, but we got one in there and the bike is amazing right now. It feels, like a sea level 300 and but it still has a ton of scream on top so anyway it's incredible thank you kelsey i'm really excited to develop that head with you uh, if you guys are interested down the road we will be offering that head and then we're going to try to call it like something like the highland cycles head or highland head basically to give jeff a hard time about you know all his slavin's mule stuff We've got to go back to the rear wheel here guys ddc Huge thank you to DDC Racing. Nate at DDC has always taken good care of me with these sprockets. These sprockets are more or less lifetime sprockets. I had one with 500 hours on it. Um, also, that brings up this rear wheel. I mentioned it at least in one of my videos, but I've had a few more comments on it. The axle size changed on the rear wheel for the XCs. Uh, the XCWs kept the 20 millimeter 
um, but the XC's and SX's went to a 22 millimeter instead of the 25 millimeter. What that means is that this wheel will not slide onto, well actually this one will because it's bulletproof designs, but the stock wheel will not slide onto an old bike because of the axle. And you can't just do the outer spacers because the inner spacer on the inside of the wheel necks down to 22 millimeters also. So you can't get the thing through, it's really annoying. Um, also, I've heard that you need different seals if you're gonna use these and stuff. So bulletproof designs, extra wheel sets, if you want one, buy them. They come with all the right spacers, all the things ready to go. I didn't have to do anything other than put the right spacers in it. So that works, but you can't go backwards the other way uh, with the stock wheel without changing the inner spacer. It's pretty dumb. I'm not, anyway, whatever. Now I have to mention one of my long-term sponsors, a guy that I absolutely love to death. He's here in Colorado, John Bruckbauer from System Tech Racing has been a big supporter of this shop and me for a very long time. And he has sent me uh, some of his System Tech Racing fork bleeders, which if you guys don't have fork bleeders, you need fork bleeders because you're supposed to be bleeding that fork every time you go ride, uh, equalizing the pressure in and out anyway. So just get fork bleeders. John's are the best. They don't leak. Um, I have had a couple leak after scrillions of years and hours and whatever and uh, he's always just warranted them sent me new ones so they are the best hands down they're a little more expensive than the china ones but that's because they're made here in colorado by a man who actually is trying to make a living so um, also john has sent me his brake pedal his oil fill cap uh his radiator or his caliper radiator which to me is absolutely brutally important on a ktm rear brake because I boil my brakes on KTMs on the rear all the time. That has helped me solve that. He also sent me the cooler for here, um, but with this guard and everything, it's not gonna work. So I'm not putting that one on yet. I might cut this off and put it on later, but it's not on there yet. Let me show you the other thing that John sent me that I am really excited to be testing. So this is the front disc guard that I've used on my other KTM and my 125 forever and ever and ever. And I honestly, I really like this, this guard a lot. It's not as strong uh, as this, as far as like a side impact that way. Um, it's carbon fiber with uh, like a urethane kind of leading edge. It goes into the wheel um, as a spacer, this acts as a spacer goes in. The really brilliant thing about this is that it slides off of rocks. It also has a little bit of built-in give because it rotates on the axle. It doesn't move once it's installed correctly um, unless it hits something, but it can move just a little bit. And it's nice because it doesn't deform and try to knock you off line as much and it doesn't hang up on rocks. That's why everybody runs plastic skid plates these days. Not everybody, but a lot of people run plastic skid plates these days. Uh, that's why they run plastic link guards. All that is it helps to slide over things. That's why your chain guide is plastic. So it slides past stuff. So that thing makes a ton of sense to me. And I will be testing. I've got my other set of wheels that's going on the front. And he also sent me a rear disc guard, which is what I've got on my 18. I couldn't install it, unfortunately, uh, because he did not have the smaller spacer, the 22 millimeter spacer for it. That's coming, so we'll be also testing that. I forgot to mention Bulletproof Designs, a swing arm guard. Huge thanks to those guys. This thing is gonna help protect this swing arm from tabs from getting broken off. I'm, anyway, super happy about that. Next grouping of products is Enduro Engineering. Huge thank you to those guys, Chris Galt and everybody at Enduro Engineering. Thank you guys so much for all the support. This end cap I actually purchased myself because Davis Service Center had it and I wanted to, uh, I needed to be legal the first time I wrote it. So anyway, Chris would have sent me one, but anyway, I bought it. Uh, it's awesome. It fits this can. Um, this is actually the same one for the 22s and back that have this, you know, non oval shape. So yes, you can get a spark arrestor for your bike. Um, I know FMF and everything is backward. We can't get those yet. And honestly, I like this little shorty pipe, so I'm gonna keep it and keep that on there with the screen style. 
Um, but yes, you can fit the one from the 22 and back onto your new bike. Uh, another thing that we weren't sure about originally, um, but the flag handguards, they do fit because it's all the hydraulics are the same, same Brembo stuff they've always used. Uh, so Enduro Engineering open handguards, I absolutely love these things. Oh, quick note again, sorry. Like I said, Bulletproof Designs has been very generous. They also sponsored me these breakaway levers. I've been using those now for quite a few years and I love them. They're adjustable, super strong, and like everything Bulletproof Designs does, it's lifetime warranty. So if you have any problems, you can send them back, get new ones. You might have to play, pay a little bit of a replacement fee or shipping, but generally it's, it's I mean, it's a lot less than buying them again. These open-ended handguards are absolutely amazing they are so strong they've been on my 18 over there for at least two two and a half years lots of crashing lots of falling down and they've never broken never had an issue also super easy to just replace flags to make them shiny again when you're ready enduro engineering it's not on here yet but will be uh, before i go race uh, i got a throttle position sensor and injector cover protector coming they just developed that thing it's just now available so that thing's on the way i should have it no today or tomorrow honestly i think i mentioned before enduro engineering is sending me one of their rubber mounted aluminum skid plates that is on the way uh, i'm not calling that part of this final build thing because again i think this thing is ready to go racing just as it sits um, and so even without that tps protector either I think that's a pretty protected area. Obviously sticks, twigs, things like that can get in there. That's why we're gonna put it on. But again, if you're ready to go GNCC style hair scramble racing, I think this thing's ready to go just like it sits. But very excited to get those on there and show you guys those. Gotta give a quick shout out to Evans Power Sports for waterless coolant. They've been a sponsor of mine for a long time. I really like Evans coolant in two strokes. I don't run it in four strokes. I think it lets things get too hot in a four stroke. Two strokes by their nature just don't get as hot. I do like it in that it keeps them from boiling over. Also keeps the coolant touching the hot parts. It doesn't develop a vapor barrier, um, like a micro boiling point that then makes things overheat even more because there's no coolant pulling heat off of things. So I like Evans very much in my two strokes thank you guys so much one of my absolute favorite things and if you've watched this whole series you know that it was the very first thing i did to this motorcycle is a massive thank you to lance and lisa at xc gear for providing me with a beautiful mako 360 the sx model it is to me being an old man who's <laughs> ridden lots of miles and beaten on my body over all the years, that to me is a highly important piece of equipment. I won't ride a bike without one. Well, I'll ride a bike without one, but I won't own a bike that doesn't have one. I did buy my very first ones. They definitely give them to me now. So thank you, Lance and Lisa, but I purchased it long before I ever got a free one. And uh, this is the SX version. The biggest difference between this and the normal one is it's got more machining done to it to make it lighter and cooler looking. Obviously they can put your name on it, which is really cool. Thank you guys for that. It makes it look super trick. And then also I am running their bar ends, their urethane style bar ends. I like those a lot because they're urethane, they're not aluminum. So they don't, um, well they scratch, but they don't show the scratches. They don't get all silvery like the aluminum ones do. Stay nice and black and they look cool. Also there is a little bit more I guess shock absorption in that, but I don't think that matters. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think that's a big deal. The main thing is it keeps, they stay looking nice even when you crash, which I do. And then the final thing I wanna mention is the counter shocks. Um, thank you, thank you, Nathan. I've talked about that before. I'll mention it again. I think it works. Nathan gave me one to try out on my other bike and my 125. He did not press me to uh, put another one on this bike. In fact, he didn't contact me at all. I contacted him and said, hey man, I'd like to have one of those counter shocks on here. I think they work. I think it's a, a small gain, but as a guy who's trying to race the 40A class and do well, um, I try to look for any kind of gain I can get, especially if it's super pretty and cool looking like that. <laughs> um, but also it, 
yeah, I think it works, guys. If you don't think it works, that's fine. Um, I would warn anyone who decides to want to like hate on it and be mean about it. First of all, come on, we're all dirt bikers. Let's not do that. But that's fine if you don't like it. I would just say if you can afford it, try it. They're $350. That's not a small amount of money. But I say try it because here's the deal. Like I've said before, 100% money back guarantee. If you don't like it, you don't think it does anything, you send it back, he gives you all your money back. Like there's nothing else in the motorcycle world like that, period. So anyway, I think they're awesome. Thank you, Nathan, very much. I appreciate it. There we go, guys. What questions do you have? Uh, we'll do a nice walk around here. What questions do you guys have about the 2023 300? I have had zero issues with this motorcycle. I know other people have been having some problems with the fault code, the power valve fault code uh, flashing up here on the uh, little FI light hour meter thing. I have yet to have that problem. So I haven't made a video about it because mine seems to be fine. I'm not sure what's going on with everybody else's. I'm sorry for everybody who's having a hard time but mine has been brilliant. If you guys haven't, make sure you check out the full playlist on the 23 300XC because we've done a ton of videos already. We're gonna keep doing lots and lots. I appreciate you guys joining me for this build video. Um, if you want to see any of the stuff installed, I've got a lot of those videos up already. Um, also comment below because I didn't film a bunch of them because it's just bolt-on stuff. It's super simple. It's like not anything crazy. I did film the suspension revalve, um, also filmed the RK Tech head install and filmed the Mako 360 and a few other things. But honestly, a lot of the stuff's just bolt-on stuff. So I don't think you need special videos for that. But anyway, guys, I love you. I hope you get out and spread the gospel of two wheels. And like always, I hope you get out and ride your dirt bikes.